The number one factor in getting the highest price possible for whatever you're selling is having good pictures. It's the very first thing a potential buyer sees, and if there aren't enough detailed pictures available, or the pictures themselves are poor quality, your item simply won't achieve its highest potential value. This video is all about what types of gear to use and how to take pictures of products for sale on online marketplaces like eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, Etsy, Facebook Marketplace, and many more. Hi, my name's Kevin. I've been a reseller on eBay for 18 years and have over 13,000 feedback on eBay. What I'm going to discuss are the easiest ways to make the best photos for any product that you are interested in listing. I buy and sell items online for a living, so I've made a lot of mistakes along the way in terms of photography. I've been able to test a lot of cameras and lenses and lights, and I've come up with a setup that works for me. Your shooting situation is likely different, and there's no one-size-fits-all. But if you're at a loss as to where to start, I'll provide some initial suggestions. Whether you use your phone, a point-and-shoot camera, or a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a separate lens to take photos of your item. The first step, no matter what you're using to take photos with, is setting up a space for your items. This might be in a bedroom, kitchen, office, or even outside, especially if it's a big item. Just make sure it's neat and tidy and not distracting if any of the background ends up in the photos used. Also, be aware of any natural light coming in if you're indoors, as that could affect the photos taken. It's very situational. Some soft light can be great for photos, but if it's super bright and harsh, it may cause problems. Try to have a uniform surface that is preferably hard, like a counter or table or desk, so that the item you're taking pictures of is able to be fully displayed properly. The next step, and perhaps the most important, is getting your lighting figured out. Especially if this is something that you plan on doing for quite a few items, or if you're a part-time seller and are taking photos regularly. This is my eBay shooting location with no lights on. This is with room lights on. This is plus the overhead video light. And this is with the side video light and large GBM light box on. If you don't have separate lighting like this, try to create a situation with whatever lights you have where it's not harsh but provides the subject area with some consistent lighting. This works great for me, as the lighting is really good overhead, and with a large softbox, it provides nice lighting for both still photos and videos that I take for YouTube. This GVM light box is more expensive than a fixed fluorescent or standard LED light, but it really covers a wide area. This one retails for $169, and it was the best value that I personally found after spending a few days researching it myself. I've been quite pleased with it. There's an affiliate link down below in the comments of the video if you're interested. If you're on a budget, I understand. And depending on the size of the items that you're taking pictures of, you might want to look at the portable LED video light that I have here. There are various models like this in the $40 to $60 range. The ones that have a built-in battery are cool because they're mobile and you can move them around the subject quite easily. Another option I've tried but never really truly enjoyed are the cube photo light boxes that includes the items nearly or entirely in the cube. They work great for many, but for me, my items varied in size too much and I found the process of getting the items in and out of the box kind of cumbersome. Behind the lights that I have here, I have a gray background. Many sellers go with pure white, and it could be as simple as a sheet or fabric as your background. There are many separate YouTube videos detailing just backgrounds, but I would just try a few things around your house first and see if they work before spending the money. Now I'm going to briefly go over taking product photography with number one, your phone, number two, a point and shoot or bridge digital camera, and number three, a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Number one, phone. If you're shooting with a phone, still try to get the lighting right. It will help out a lot. The smallish sensors on most cell phones and tiny lenses result in built-in cameras that don't do great with not much light. If you're shooting on an iPhone or another major manufacturer's phone, in the settings, one thing that I like to do is adjust any filter that you want prior to taking, as well as, perhaps most importantly, set the crop to what you'll be uploading to. eBay, for example, supports 1x1 one one photos, so taking photos in any other format, like 16x9 or 4x3, will lose valuable real estate to the margins that will become white space. So toggle this to 1 to 1 if your phone supports it. If you have good lighting, you shouldn't need to use the onboard phone flash for photos, which would cause reflections and make the image less natural and vibrant. One plus to using a smartphone is that if you have the eBay or other platforms mobile app, you can upload directly from your phone. If you have sharing set up on your phone, you can also set up downloads directly to your computer if you want to upload via desktop. I took these sample photos on my iPhone 13 with the lighting setup that I have. They do a serviceable job, actually, and for the occasional shooting session, I think they work just fine for me. Number two, point and shoot or bridge digital cameras. If you're using or considering getting a point and shoot digital camera, here are a few things to note. My favorite type of camera for eBay photos is a super zoom camera, as many of those have macro modes and are able to get detailed photos of tags or small tears or rips on clothing or small lettering. 
Often, many older digital cameras have focus tied to flash use, meaning that unless you're using a tripod, the camera focuses best when the armboard flash is fired. It's something to consider for use and will likely cause a bit of issues unless the flash is far enough away from the subject. Take a look at some of the pictures that I took with the Panasonic DMC FZ80 Super Zoom Camera, which is a bridge digital camera with an incredible 60x optical zoom. These aren't available new anymore, but they're on the used and refurbished market in the $200 to $300 range. This FZ80 also has a 1 to 1 aspect ratio, which is awesome. You just load the photos in, no retouches should be really needed. It saves a lot of time. But many especially older point and shoot cameras don't have 1 to 1, which isn't the end of the world, you just need to crop it during the upload process. Your results will depend upon your lighting situation as well as the camera you use itself. If you're not satisfied with either, then perhaps consider number three. Number three is DSLR or mirrorless camera. If you have the budget and means, the DSLR or mirrorless camera option is my favorite choice for the most professional photos. What do you get? Well, depending upon the body and lens, of course, this option will let you create some incredibly color accurate photos with soft background blur. Blur can be enhanced by having some sort of background in your photo. If you're a reseller on Etsy, for example, you know how important backgrounds can be. These professional photos that you can get with the DSLR or mirrorless camera can really give you a leg up on your competition, especially if it's a higher dollar sale. These cameras have the largest sensors, meaning that they're able to handle lower light situations better than a point and shoot or camera phone. Especially if you have a newer camera with a great autofocus, like the Canon EOS R50, which is my everyday shooting camera. I normally list about 20 items per day and take about 150 to 200 photos a day with the Canon EOS R50. I've tried a variety of lenses with the body, but I really love utilizing an adapter and the Canon 24 to 105 millimeter lens that enables me to take mid-range photos that are really exceptional. I took all these photos with the Canon R50 and 24 to 105 millimeter lens. I'll have a link to both down in the comments. The R50 street price as of this filming in early 2024 is 629. The adapter was around 129 to 149, and the lens can be had for around 679 new Canon has since released a Canon 24 to 105 millimeter R STM lens that will also offer great picture quality at $399. So a little over 1000 for the kit. But this kit will last me years of shooting for product photography. Another good lens, no matter the body, is the 18 to 135 millimeter focal length, which is commonly used for eBay photography. I shy away from wide angle 12 or 20 or 35 millimeter fixed lenses. While the center of the image is in focus, the sides are distorted, and I don't care for it much for this application. In summary, test, test, test. It may take you many iterations of lights and backgrounds, as well as trying out potentially all three different ways of shooting until you've arrived at your preferred setup. That's kind of the fun process for me. It's a bit of a puzzle depending upon where you're shooting and what types of items you're shooting. I hope this was a helpful video and I wish you luck in your journey. If you have any questions about any camera related gear, lenses, or lighting, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to help out.